The locks being put on the Euromanx building today following the creditors' meeting. Those looking for money from any assets of Euromanx were left disappointed as the liquidator, Mike Simpson, told the meeting they were unlikely to get a penny back. Well, today uh, we held the first meeting of creditors, uh, which is um, a requirement for liquidation to uh, hold a meeting to enable creditors to uh, come along and establish their claims and to hear about uh, what happened to the company and uh, how the liquidation process will, will go forward. And what did you tell them? Well, uh, started off by going through the, uh, the company's statement of affairs. Um, the company has about £450,000 worth of assets, but it's got over £3.3 .3 million worth of liabilities. Um, so sadly, that means that there'll be no money for unsecured creditors, people who book flights and so on. Um, that money that, that, that is there will go to the uh, preferred creditors, which will be primarily the government. You've had a chance to look through their books. Obviously, the company's been in, in, a, in a shaky situation for some time. Uh, I think I'm right in saying the company is, has, has not made a profit from day one. Um, it's certainly been um, loss-making for quite some time. What was the re reaction to the creditors today? Well, I think people already knew what to expect. Um, they knew that the company was insolvent and there was very unlikely to be any, any assets for distribution to them. So there wasn't really any, any great surprise. And where do you go from here? From here, we have to uh, reconcile the um, information from the airlines. Uh, Manx2.com and FlyB uh, kindly took transfers from some people who booked flights with Euromanx. Um, I need to reconcile that information to the, to the information which the credit card companies have. Uh, because obviously people will be, some people will be claiming on their credit card insurance for, uh, for flights which they were unable to take. Uh, once that is done, uh, th there isn't that much left to do because there's very little in the way of assets to, to deal with. Is this an unusual situation, to, to this sort of uh, in, in creditors? Uh, well, it, it's um, unfortunately, I think it's a sign of the times. Uh, I, I guess there's going to be more, uh, as the economy turns, I guess there's going to be more, more liquidations and more creditors meetings. And was this down to the, that last final hurdle of the, the fuel going up and up and up? Sort of thing, or? I think that they'd had competition on all their routes, so there was overcapacity uh, and they were unable to get enough, enough people on their planes. Um, and then, yes, uh, aviation fuel pretty much doubling in price over the last year, I think was the final, the final nail in the coffin. It was revealed that the company had just £450,000 worth of assets but had over £3.3 .3 million worth of liabilities. The final aircraft flew out of the island just minutes before the company ceased trading in May. Yeah, as we went wheels up, apparently the uh, information was passed on to the appropriate people in the press that the company was going bust. What do you think about the operation of your Max? Oh, uh, well... Operation-wise, uh, I wasn't privy to a lot of the information, but uh, the company seemed pretty good at first, and uh, I was with them from the start uh, for nearly three and a half years. And uh, unfortunately, um, the last month or so after the company was uh, uh, bought out by another management consortium, uh, things started to go downhill from there, but uh, nobody really expected it to go the way it did. We did think we were supposed to be getting bought out by either Flyby or maybe even Air Aaron, and that was uh, what a lot of people were thinking right up to the last day. Did you uh, get all your money? Were you owed money? Uh, yes, I'm owed uh, quite a bit of money. Um, the uh, month and a quarter of wages, flight pay and, and holidays and everything. The government have helped us out in the initial month after the company closed and we got some money. Uh, today we just came along just to see if there was anything in the pot that we may get what we were actually owed. And? Um, well, there's not a lot in the pot, so I very much doubt we'll get anything, but uh, again, the government may help us out with that, but that's yet to be seen. It was not just the passengers that were caught up in the failure, but also the companies involved in supplying Euromanx. Well, you've got a whole station in Liverpool and a further 20, 25 people here in the Isle of Man. So it's been quite, it has quite an impact, not just here in the Isle of Man as well, but elsewhere. Are you satisfied with what you heard here today? It's what I expected. I mean, again, nobody's ever happy with it. They're not going to be paid. But luckily, the Manx government has put in some provisos and have been quite quick to help us out. So I'm happy with that. The government had come in for some criticism for allowing the company to continue trading by not demanding monies owed to it. 
I think the government worked as hard as they could to make sure that um, Euromanx could, could have an opportunity to, to find a way out of the, the situation they're in. So I think government did everything it could to try and help um, re rescue the situation, if you like. I think if government hadn't done that, we'd have been accused of actually pulling the plug on Euromanx. What does it mean for the Isle of Man to, to lose a major carrier? Obviously it was very disappointing because uh, Euromanx had built up a good reputation the last couple of years. Obviously before that they had a, a, a rocky time, but obviously over that period of two to three years they built up a, 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 a good uh, reputation. And obviously there's a vacuum in the, in the, in the market they've left. Um, we're working very hard to make sure that the vacuum is filled with quality airlines. Are you keeping with the open skies policy? We are keeping with the open skies policy because that gives the opportunity for airlines to come on into the Isle of Man on different routes and to make sure there is competition between airlines in different areas. I mean, with the cost of fuel going up all the time, it's, it's going to become an expensive thing. And there's definitely a shrinkage going on, isn't it? Well, it's certainly, it, there certainly is a shrinkage and, and um, airline companies are looking at ways of increasing their load factors, which means that they'll be cutting down on their rotation, which is the sensible way to go forward. How important is it for the Isle of Man to have good airlinks? It's essential for the Isle of Man to have very good airlinks, um, not just for people uh, living and uh, going on holiday from the Isle of Man, but our business links coming into the Isle of Man and our holiday makers coming to the Isle of Man as well. Just a handful of people turned up to the creditors meeting here at Euromanx headquarters to hear that there is no money left to pay out to anybody. Most people were actually accommodated by other airlines to fly after Euromanx collapsed. But for the 70 workers and others that associate with the business, it was not good news today.